So, uh, so we'll get started. Um, we're really excited. Uh, we have a wonderful presentation for you guys. Um, and um, this is a very, uh, very, very uh, interesting topic. I think it's a very um, pervasive topic, um, ubiquitous. Um, and a lot of times when we're thinking about this, it's usually what comes into the forefront um, regarding weight loss, right? Um, because it's something that we visually see. Um, before we get into tonight's presentation, and I'm going to have a great bunch of folks come on with me. I'm super, super excited. Um, you know, we're going to, I'm going to introduce or reintroduce myself for those of you guys who don't know. My name is Dr. Colin Zhu. Um, I'm also the founder of The Chef Doc. Um, if you've been following along uh, with, uh, you know, my journey in helping others uh, thrive, um, founded The Chef Doc in 2017. I'm board certified in family medicine and lifestyle medicine. And um, it's really as a premise to help others more deeply, more broadly, and create a bigger impact um, because of the fact that the healthcare system that I've been working in uh, wasn't really helping the patient or helping me in that manner. Um, and so reflexively, I needed to pivot and create something different. Um, and so I, you know, that's how the chef doc uh, was born um, really briefly. And uh, it's been a wonderful journey since then. Um, and uh, here we are offering new services in collaboration with others. So I'll go a little bit more in my journey. And um, basically what we want to do is kind of create the framework is uh, we'll start the presentation and we'll go into the objectives. So here we go. So pretty much the title of the presentation is weight loss. Is it just a lack of uh, self-motivation or, you know, is it my fault um, or, you know, is it I'm just subject, you know, just subjugated to the, my environment. Right. And so the session goals of this is introductions. We're going to discuss about the impact of weight loss on our health. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, frequently asked questions uh, for uh, what we're going to offer, which is coaching, and then, you know, discuss more deeply what it is, what it is not, okay, and how we can strive for more sustainable uh, solutions, okay? So a little bit about me is a little bit about what I said. I'm originally from New Jersey. I'm from the Northeast. I'm a first-generation immigrant child. Um, board, double board certified in family and lifestyle medicine. Uh, my story doesn't really begin unless I talk about my mother, who is a traditional Chinese medical doctor. She has uh, created the foundation for me to look at people and patients in a very holistic manner. She instilled um, the characteristics and qualities um, of integrity, authenticity, and compassion uh, for me. And that really led me through the gateways through um, health and wellness. Um, when I went through school, um, I went into an osteopathic school. I really, really enjoyed it. The tenets, the principles, the philosophies. Um, that's the title of a DO, for those of you who don't know. Now, through my journey through schooling, I realized really quickly that I was really ill-prepared. Um, there was a lot of people that walked through our door whether it's um, you know, a reason for visit for a cough or low back pain, they always had some sort of chronic lifestyle uh, related factors of just not being able to uh, get better. They had high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer. They had some sort of lifestyle risk factor attached to them. And so I said to myself, well, I'm, I'm pretty ill prepared, you know, and um, I want to, you know, uh, I want to be able to do better and not just learn about how drugs work or learn about how disease just manifests, which are important, but I wanted to really talk about more about how health promotion occurs, how we can maintain our wellness, how we can talk about self-care. Where does food come from? You know, what does diet and nutrition mean? And so I took a lot of detours after school. I went to uh, culinary school, not just any culinary school. I went to a uh, health-supportive plant-based culinary school. And I got certified in health coaching. Um, I wanted to understand and improve my relationship skills and my communication skills. Um, because when you go through school and training, you know, you learn about how a doctor and patient relationship uh, happens. But I felt like there are some limitations with that. And so I enhanced all this stuff. Um, and I on honestly want to recognize the interconnection with all this. 
And when I uh, did all this, I matriculated into doctor into training and I started working as a family physician. Uh, what did I learn about uh, how what, what did I learn about cooking and why did I cook? Um, I used it not just as a hobby, a uh, hobby. I didn't want to learn just another passion. Um, it was something that I wanted to do to kind of enhance uh, my actual medical training. And I felt that food was the connecting part for all of our lives, right? We could we know that smoking is not great for us. We know that drinking is not great for us, right? But we can't live without food. And food means so many different things to so many uh, different kinds of people. It's communal. It's emotional. Um, it's the intersection of you know, cultures. It's how we express love and gratitude and appreciation, right? It's the topic for discussion. It's always centered ar ar around food. And so it made it a point for me that I needed to go back into school to learn about food and not just learn about nutrition. And so that's what I did. And from that education, I started teaching. I started giving demonstrations and workshops and, you know, guided my medical education, you know, my fellow residents and uh, students. Um, and that's exactly what I did. Um, I also knew that it was uh, important to walk your talk um, and to, you know, take accountability. So that's what I did. Um, I had... Two, I have two great, wonderful parents that, um, you know, cooked growing up and I learned a lot from them. I went into school, um, I interned and I learned a lot about what is now called culinary medicine or commonly is also known as food as medicine. And I started giving workshops since 2016. Now going, how did we arrive here? And what are we talking about today is weight loss, right? But I don't want to just center about weight and talk just about weight. I want to talk about how weight actually affects other aspects of our health, individual health, and other aspects of our life as well. There's a quote from a lifestyle medicine pioneer um, that says, obesity isn't new, but the obesity epidemic is. And if we actually trace back um, you know, obesity, we can actually trace back all the way to you know, Louis VI the, the or Henry VIII. Um, you know, having an affluence, uh, an abundance of food is nothing, you know, new, um, but the obesity epidemic is, and the trends didn't actually start until the 1970s. Okay. Skyrocketing over the last four or five decades. Okay. Today, 71% of American adults are overweight and 40% of men and women are actually classified as obese. So what could be the cause of obesity? You might ask yourself, is it just my fault? Is it because I don't have enough willpower? Is it because I don't move enough, not enough, you know, physical activity? Now there's a cartoon here and then the print might be a little bit small, but it says, are you eating properly and getting plenty of exercise? And this is a cartoon that shows, you know, uh, you know, more heavy set, you know, physician. And, um, I would like to say our colleagues, you know, walk the talk. Um, and I think, you know, uh, we have great intentions, but sometimes things fall by the wayside, no pun intended, or maybe pun intended, who knows. But uh, what I love about the profession that I practice, which is lifestyle medicine, is really a profession more so about accountability. Um, and I think it's really, really important, um, you know, to talk about it from the standpoint of the first person perspective. So is it a lack of activity? So let's take a deeper dive. Now, the CEO of PepsiCo once said that, you know, if everyone moved more, the obesity epidemic wouldn't be created, okay, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, a lot of corporations, especially the food and beverage corporations, do something called lean washing. And if you ever heard of something, a technique called green washing, lean washing is essentially you're describing a, a, a problem, in this case, obesity. And instead of, you know, solving the problem for it, you're actually contributing to the problem for it. So corporations, what they'll do is that they'll say that their products and services actually don't contribute to it when in fact it does. There was a poll that asked these corporations, you know, what is it that contributes to this uh, obesity epidemic? Interestingly enough, 83% chose lack of exercise versus 34% chose excessive caloric consumption. When in fact, over the last few decades, physical activity actually increased 
in the last few decades in America and in Europe. And what's interesting is that over time, there's been an increase in automation, increase of computerization, and increase in urbanization that has contributed to this. And what's interesting is that you know, from the onset of industrial revolution, which helped in terms of manufacture and mass production of goods, and that helped a lot of our lives, right? So early 1900s, the washing machines, vacuum cleaners, and the Model T Ford helped society in many different ways. But that did that cause us to be more sedentary, right? The obesity epidemic started a lot in you know 1970s but you have great machines and inventions that started way before but the bc epidemic didn't start until the 1970s so what actually happened is it genes does it run in the family so we've actually studied um, markers, biological markers for this. And interestingly enough, almost about 100 markers um, was found to be linked to obesity. Okay, There was a certain marker called FTO uh, that was linked, Okay, but it actually accounts for less than 3% um, in the difference of body mass index, Okay, resulting in only the difference of a few hundred calories per year if you actually had this gene expressed. Right. Um, there was an interestingly, uh, a study comparing the weight of biological versus adopted children. So when they did this study, interestingly enough, um, the biological, you know, children had a 27% more increased risk when they actually were born from more obese parents. Right. But when they actually had adopted children, they also had a 21% increased risk of, you know, metabolic, you know, different kinds of diseases when they weren't even born to the same parents, which was interesting. The Pima Indians of Arizona is a very interesting group um, demographics um, because they had to live through a lot of periods of scarcity, okay? They're, they have evolved in a way where they were able to survive this, right? Because they live off of the traditional lands, when colonization happened and a lot of their lands were uprooted literally and taken over, they had to, a lot of them died through famine, but from the ones that did that survive, they had to, you know, get off of their traditional lands and live off of government programs. And guess what? A lot of chronic diseases skyrocketed. Okay. And what, what's interesting is that when they found, you know, uh, descendants, okay. Um, of the same group uh, living along Mexico, tapping from the same genetic pool and they were actually living their traditional lifestyles. Okay. And if you're talking about food they lived off of something called the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, right? They find that when they're living their traditional lifestyles, they're having five times less obesity and diabetes. So from the same pioneer, he says, genes may load the gun, but diet pulls the trigger. And this essentially describes epigenetics. So you may have heard of genetics, but there's something called epigenetics, which is basically the changing of the expression of genes. Okay. Epi means above, you know, genetics, uh, which also means metabolic imprinting. Um, so there's also a couple interesting studies, which I'll note here is that, you know, I'll pose a question to you guys. Do you think a baby has an increased risk? Um, of obesity and other metabolic diseases if they were born to a surrogate mother that was obese or born to an obese biological mother or a skinny biological mother, uh, rather. Okay. It was a very interesting study. And they found that, you know, children were actually had an increased risk if they were born to an obese surrogate mother and their biological mother was actually skinny which was really interesting. Another interesting study where, you know, they're comparing obesity rates for siblings that were born to the same mother, okay, that had bariatric surgery. So they compared the children before the surgery that they were born before the surgery and then compared to children that are born afterwards. And they had um, increased risk for the siblings that were born before the surgery, okay? So which tells you that it's not so much the DNA, but it's, you know, within the actual womb um, of the actual mother, okay? There was a study done that uh, shows that um, in 2016, mother's obesity appear, impairs the health of at least three later generations, such as diabetes and heart disease. 
So the prime cause for obesity epidemic is neither gluttony or nor sloth. Okay, um, obesity may be simply a normal response to an abnormal um, environment. So when you look at biological preferences and how we evolved, okay, and actually comparing, you know, hunters and gatherers back then, when we were hunters and gatherers, we were essentially trying to maximize as much calories per you know, buck. Okay. So meaning that when you're out scavenging, you're trying to get as much calories as possible because you want to be able to live through periods of scarcity, right? Because you're not used to eating three times a day or more as a modern society does. And our uh, evolution, we've evolved to go towards sweet, starchy, and fatty foods. Why? Because they actually pack the most calories. And when you fast forward to modern times, food industries have exploited and taken advantage of this. And so what do they do? You know, we've created products, food related, you know, products that, you know, take advantage of this. And that's what we crave. Okay. When you have the late night munchies, right, you don't crave broccoli, right? How many of you all crave broccoli when we have the late night munchies? How many of us crave cauliflower when we have the late night munchies, right? No. You know, what do we do back in the day? I know I did during my college years. I went for the bowl of cereal, right? It was everything. It had the fat and the milk and had the sugar and the cereal. It was great. Um, that's what we crave for, right? And food industries knew this and they exploit this, right? There's a study um, doing a whole bunch of MRI scans for food addicts, right? Which is not an actual diagnosis, um, but you know, uh, we're here, right? So food addiction is real. Um, and so when they compared a, a food addict, okay. And they showed them a picture of a milkshake. Okay. Interestingly enough, when they did an MRI scan, it lit up the same centers, the dopamine reward pathways as someone that abuses cocaine. And as someone that is an alcoholic, if you show them someone smoking crack cocaine and showing them a picture of whiskey, right? They did the same MRI scans and they lit up the same, you know, centers, which is so interesting. Um, essentially obese people, what we found is that we're alike in one fundamental respect. We literally overeat, but it's not food, it's calories. So that begs the question, what happened in the 1970s, right? So several things happened, okay? And it happened, you know, continuously th through that, okay? Technological advances, okay, in terms of mass production and supply of food, right? Ready to, to eat, ready to heat, um, you know, everything that's packaged became uh, more prolific, right? And so when that happens, what does that do to you know, for those of us who take it at economics 101 and, and the law of supply and demand, what did it happen? The prices drop, right? So that means what? You cook less, you eat out more, right? And so other things that happen is that government subsidies, your tax paying money, your hard earned, you know, money and you get taxed from, what did the federal government do? It, you know, took all that money and subsidized big sugar, big corn, and big soybean industries to the point where these ingredients, which are fundamentally the ingredients for a lot of the products that we see become so cheap, right? If you look at Heinz, you know, ketchup, if you look at Coca-Cola, if you look at Pepsi, if you look at the ingredients, you know, for, you know, McDonald's, right? Right. Big meat, right? All these products are so cheap. Is it a coincidence that all these things are so cheap relative, relative, relatively to a head of broccoli, right? Like that doesn't make sense, right? But it's not a coincidence. Something else also happened in the early 80s um, in, uh, in, investment, in the investment world. Um, the CEO of General Electric gave a speech and basically started the shareholder value movement, okay? And that led to basically you know, any company that's publicly traded to maximize short-term returns for investors. So what that means is that for the food and beverage companies, what that means is that it's not about customer satisfaction. It's about shareholder satisfaction. So what does that mean? I have to make, we have to make products to appease the customers eventually to appease shareholders. When you're looking at your supermarket, look at the checkout line. Okay. Look at the aisle next to the checkout line. What is there, 
Okay. You have every snack product there. You have every beverage there. You have every candy bar there, right? Do you think that's a coincidence? No, because these companies pay a lot of money. This is how supermarkets profit, right? They actually profit from products like these. You know, they pay good money, okay, to land in those shelves at eye level, okay? This is the flip side of real estate. You know, real estate also applies in this case as well. When you have these companies having this much money, right? It's a billion dollar industry. You know, diet industry is a billion dollar industry. The food and beverage is a billion dollar industry. They have enough money to hire child psychologists to be able to make commercials, to sway their parents to buy more. They've hired behavioral psychologists to work on our impulses, to know that to know to know when to get us right in terms of commercials, uh, in terms of end caps and supermarkets, in terms of you know uh, radio spots, right? Um, they know when you're distressed, preoccupied, and tired. Okay, that's when we overconsume. Okay, so effectively by the end of the year 2000. The United States produces almost upwards of 4,000 calories a day for every man, woman, and child. Uh, just to highlight a couple of studies about home food preparation, how that's gone down over the last 40 years from 65 to 08. The U.S. eating away increases 42% from 1970 to 2010. This is a study about, you know, cooking at home and its association with uh, diet quality and weight loss. People, when they cook more, they'd effectively eat less carbohydrates, less sugar, less fat. Cooking and obesity trends. Um, they've noticed in other countries, they noticed that the French and the Italian, when they spend more time cooking, right, they have lower rates of obesity. The Brits, who spend very similar amounts of cooking, like the Americans, have comparable rates of obesity. We also studied in terms of what are the barriers to home cooking? What are the facilitators, right? What gets us to cook more? We've noticed that lack of skills, limited time, right? Lack of skills leads to less low, lower uh, confidence, right? How do we get us to cook more, right? Organization, planning, and also the enjoyment of cooking. I tell patients that your health starts in the kitchen. Why? Because you know what goes into your, into your food. You know what is in your kitchen. You're also surrounded by people that you love, right? You get to enjoy cooking um, a, as much um, as before. Family table, family dinner, the art of discussion, um, you know, the art of you know improving your relationships with others through a communal meal. That makes a difference. Here's are, here are some recent um, you know uh, CDC stats from 21. Um, COVID is new. COVID is being the third highest. Okay. Heart disease and cancer are still the top two. Okay. And majority of these causes, okay, have association and linkages to diet, you know, lifestyle and nutrition. And if we're talking about COVID, right? If you didn't think about your health before, COVID reminded you of it. And what was interesting about COVID, which I thought was a positive note, was that no matter what you said, didn't say, do, didn't do, it effectively affected someone else, right? Whether it's a loved one or a stranger. What's interesting about COVID is that when you have these medical conditions, it increases your risk for, for COVID. Cancer, right? Kidney disease, liver disease, diabetes, heart conditions, and guess what? Obesity, right? So having extra weight increases your ability to contract COVID. Now, obesity is linked. Like we said, we're not just talking about weight loss for the sake of numbers. We're talking about how this affects everything else. So think about it kind of like an octopus, right? And the head of the octopus is obesity, but it touches so many different things. Arthritis, high blood pressure, back pain, cancer, brain disease, right? Dementia, cognitive impairment. Infertility, right? Heart disease, gallstones, right? The most common cause of, you know, um, of liver uh, disease that's not from hepatitis, okay, is um, non-fatty uh, liver disease, okay, which is also from the diet, chronic kidney disease. So what is the flip side of all this? I do come bearing good news is that when you actually can lose weight, 
okay, you can actually have major health benefits. If you effectively lose 3%, if you had, if you're at 200 and that's six pounds, right? You can improve your blood sugar. You can improve your triglycerides. If you lose 5%, right? So that's 10 pounds at 200. Your blood pressure, cholesterol improve, and you essentially cut your risk of developing diabetes in half. So how do we get here? I did a survey many, many moons ago, and I essentially asked people at the beginning of the year, it's 2023. You know, you want to improve your health and wellness. What are you looking for? You know, what are your goals? And essentially, this is the results that we came up with. 84% responded that they wanted to achieve better uh, weight goals and health optimization. I asked them about barriers. 31% said not enough time. About 30% said no support system, right? And also, they weren't in a conducive environment. And I asked them, have they ever used a life slash health coach before? And 89% uh, said they've never used it before. 75% said if, you know, they would be more interested uh, to learn more about group coaching is something that I post for them. So here we are. So um, I'm, uh, how are we doing with time? Okay, good. Um, so I want to bring up my friends. Uh, I'm super, super um, excited. I'm going to bring up first... Um, the collaborating uh, partner and founder um, of that we're going to offer. And I'm also going to respectively, you know, bring on um, the coaches that's going to be leading uh, these cohorts. And that's what we're offering is um, group coaching uh, for um, weight loss. And we're looking at this as a very life sustaining. OK, I'm not even going to say sustainable life sustaining um, benefit as part of your armamentarium. Okay. And we're going to talk about what coaching is. So I'm going to bring up, uh, let's see, remove this, Linda, Zainab, and John. I'm going to unmute everyone. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, John, let's talk to you first. Okay. Um, tell us what is that we're doing here, okay? How do we arrive to this point? And can you give us just a quick primer on what is coaching and what is not coaching? Mm -hmm. Sure, so Terra Health Coaching, we, we, I think we first met um, Dr. Zhu through the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, uh, both involved there. And, and what Terra Health Coaching does is we, we partner with physicians, uh, employers, and, and, and systems all around the country to offer unique, medically relevant, and culturally relevant health coaching. And then, and then this past weekend, I, I kind of got in a frustrated conversation with someone that says, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I said, well, the same, and this was for, for an employer situation. I said, for the, same, for the same medication that you're going to approve in your benefits plan and you're going to pay for, for someone that is suffering from a chronic illness, they're going to get a medication. And it's going to come in a little orange bottle with a little white top and you're going to pay for it until the, until the foreseeable future. Well, that's where our coaches live. Our coaches live in that little orange bottle. If that's how you want to think about it, our coaches live in that little orange bottle and on a weekly basis, they pop their head out and they have a conversation with you about how your week is going. And it, it took that, it took that kind of in a joking, sarcastic conversation for them to think about how it might fit into an employer benefits plan. And that's where coaching Thankfully, CPT codes are in Washington, D.C., getting, getting, uh, getting figured out. Coaching is becoming a, a real thing at Terra Health Coaching. We, we work with, with physicians that write us a prescription. A referral comes right over us, and it's a lifestyle medicine prescription. And the same way, instead of just going after the symptoms, we're going to go after the symptoms, but also the root cause. And we're going to go deep in, into a lifestyle medicine prescription and talk about everything. Um, so, it, you know, as... As the three other members that you see on the screen here, we're all believers and, and hopefully everyone here that's watching is intrigued, but there is so much more, uh, you know, Dr. Colin, he can wear scrubs or he can wear a chef's hat. And there's probably under 1% of physicians in our country that can do that. So he's basically a wizard in this, in this aspect. But in terms of weight loss, 
has Dr. Colin ever been obese? Ha, you know, there's a whole nother realm of this battle that we fight every day because this modern world that Dr. Colin talked about is very it's stacked against us. Not to be negative, but it's stacked against us. And when we finally realize that, which Zainab and Linda have been to that side and back, they can talk about it. Could I talk about it? Well, I don't think so. I, I don't know the mental state when someone who has, has, has having one of those dark weeks or one of those relapse weeks. That's all part of health coaching. That's what we do. We match up the, the individual people with a coach that has been there, that has done that, and that knows what's going on. And that's why it's so important for them to, for that, that we were able to connect Dr. Colin and, and get, get these two wonderful women involved because they've walked that walk themselves and they know a different triggers and different sensors of these people who are battling weight loss in this instance, but we can go on, we can go down a wormhole in terms of other chronic illnesses in this, in this country and in this world that we're living in, but really cool to be able to offer this because it is such, like I said before, you're a wizard in terms of healthcare and culinary aspects, but then it goes even further. And that's where it's so cool to have a, a physician led group coaching program that is going to tackle everything from the scrubs to the chef's hat, but also the mental battle and the environmental battle that Zainab and Linda know so well and really nurture people through this kind of rediscovery. And, and, and it's just, it's, it's really neat to be able to do that. That's how we, that's kind of the long answer of how we, we came together and, and, and how we're kind of, how we're teaming up now. Awesome. Awesome. Linda, I'll let you take the stage and can you tell us your, you know, your story and how you got here? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zhu. And John, that was really beautifully said was just beautiful. Um, so I'm Linda Roberts. I'm from the greater Boston area. And I like to say I'm here today because I was there yesterday, a little more than yesterday. But anyhow, um, I was at a point in my life where I was very unhealthy, a point where I really never thought I would see myself at. And I was unhealthy on every single level. And I really got to a point where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was on getting um, medical conditions increasing almost every single year, more medications. And, you know, I had a hard time on so many levels, walking, everything. I mean, it was a little crazy. And, and I was really gotten to the point that I was sick and tired and something happened. And I started one day, one decision at a time, started changing my life. Okay. Started for me with more exercise, with walking more, with taking care of a lot of that physical piece, as well as in the kitchen. Anyhow, I started, you know, getting into the diet piece more and slowly really transformed my life completely. Medical conditions, you know, just reverse them on um, medications gone for the most, for, except for something I've been on for ages. Um, and in general, my whole quality of life just skyrocketed. Um, I couldn't believe where I was. I really couldn't believe where I was. And then I actually did it um, because I just never thought I could, but it, I'm here to say yes, 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 yes. Um, again, one day, one decision at a time. Well, I had felt so, so good and I was feeling so good that I said, I I can never, ever go back to where I was. Just It's just not an option. So I ended up taking a health coaching course quite simply as an insurance policy for myself so that I would never go back. So I would learn things to kind of push me forward and keep me there to the best place possible follow that up with um, with lifestyle medicine certification from the American College of Lifestyle Medicaid Lifestyle Medicine because I like everyone here believes because I found out myself it really is that easy it's all about lifestyle and making these changes and it feels so incredible I also added and I love the culinary piece and so I did that that part too because I that's just a passion of mine and it's about falling in love with food again and having fun with it and just embracing it and it can be done easy and and it doesn't have to require a lot of time it's just a matter of learning about that piece so basically i'm here to say yes it can be done you know it absolutely can be done get in touch with why is it that you want to lose weight? What is it? What do you want to achieve? You know, what's that piece that's that's really getting you there? And 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 just 
dig in there a little bit, go explore and join us because this can really, really, really transform your life. So thank you for having me here. And Linda, how much, uh, how many pounds did you lose over time? 120 pounds. Woo! In my <laughs> 50s. In my 50s. <laughs> Don't say it can't be done. Don't say it can't be done. Absolutely. Uh, Zainab, I'm going to have you take the stage. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Zainab El Shami. I right now live in Louisville. I uh, have always been obese my entire life. I was always the fat child. I was always, always the heavy one. You know, the rest of my family wasn't, which now they are, and I'm not. So they just kept getting bigger and I got smaller. But uh, I had gestational diabetes when I had both my pregnancies. And the doctors told me, you know, pay attention, be careful. You have to be tested when you're older. And then I was tested when I was 40. So I had diabetes. I was one of those people. I'd never really liked medicines. I mean, I'm terrible. I just don't like them. I don't think they're going to do anything for you. So I had a hard time. Doctors had a hard time convincing me to take medicine. They want to be on, be on insulin. And so I started reading. I started trying to figure things out. But there was not really any information for me that was just go beyond move a little more, eat a little less. That's it. And I'm like, yeah, but if I do, I've tried that. I've tried everything. I've yo-yoed my whole life. I lose 60 pounds. I gain 90. I lose 70 pounds. I gain 80. It's, it's just never, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out what was I doing wrong? How, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my body. Maybe I have problems. I don't know what was wrong. So I just kind of, in the end, you just kind of maybe accept it that you're heavy that I'm big, I'm very tall, big bone, German descent. And I was like, well, I'm just going to be heavier. I'm always just going to be heavy. So when I, I will say my epiphany came when I turned 50 and my life was just, I was miserable. I was on like seven, eight medications. I was on SSRIs for depression. I had diabetes and kept getting complications and complications and more problems and higher doses. And it just got to be where I got a point where I was going to be an empty nester. I wasn't very happy. My marriage was kind of going down, going south. And I just told myself, what am I doing? I just, how can I think of living longer like this? Because I was just miserable, just nothing. Couldn't walk like Linda was saying, just, you're just miserable. You're closed. You don't, can't shop. You just can't walk. You have blisters. I had a lot of problems like that. And I started reading, as I said, reading, and then the internet came. So I started searching and things on internet and I was seeing people talk about be a vegan. Vegan is really healthy. And I tried that for a year. And surprisingly, when I tried that for a year, plus I always, of course, went to doctor appointments and things, but I tried being a vegan for a year, really following some different recipes and different people showing what, what to cook. My A1C went up to 11. It went higher and higher. And the doctor said, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I became vegan. I thought that was healthy. And I was just really frustrated by then because he, he had no answers for me. He then wanted to put me on insulin because I always refused. But my doses of all the other medicines, three medications for diabetes, three, and the doses kept going higher and higher. So in the end, I just miraculously, I call it a miracle. I got an email from um, a couple of people who were giving a summit about reversing, reversing, reversing diabetes. And I thought, I have books here. They're about from a diabetes specialist. No one has ever said I can reverse diabetes. So I just went all in 21 days, watched all these different doctors and they were just, it was just simple. And I'm like, what? I can reverse it. Yeah. It's all about the fat in your food. It's all about taking your fat level down. It's all about, you know, being more healthy and all of the doctors, everyone was into lifestyle medicine. So I started learning about that. And then finally um, I said, I'm just going to dive in. And I did. I'm one of those people. I just the next day, just dived in. No more oil. I've never had it. Got off salt, got off sugar. I'm one of those that doesn't have any of those things. And in 18 months, I lost 120 pounds, got off every single medication. I don't take anything now. Uh, I, I used to have a BMI of 40. Now it's 22. I used to have a waist measurement of 48. And now it's 34. So, and I'm very tall. So yeah. And it's just really great. It's fantastic. I love it. But once I just, I did it myself, I was just the preacher. I mean, because everyone would come to me, well, what did you do? Or they would ask my family, is anything wrong with her? You know, she's sick. Cause that's what they think when you're losing all this weight. And I'm, they're like, nope, she's just getting healthy, you know? And I will say, because a lot of people tell you it's the in and the out, the exercise and the food. I'll say it's really not. And we can debate it or we can talk about it. Exercise is fantastic for your mind, for your outlook on life, but 
you can just sit and go lower calories and learn the right foods to eat. You're never hungry. You're eating, you know, from the lower density foods and uh, didn't really exercise much to lose the weight. Exercise to tone your body, to be flexible, all these other things, and it makes you have happy and healthy. But when you're obese, it's really hard because you have a lot of joint pain. You have a lot of these problems. And I think this is why a lot of people think I'm just stuck here. How can I lose the weight? I'm not going to join a gym. Everyone's going to laugh at me. I can't walk. You're telling me you want me to do 100 squats? How am I doing? I can't walk to the block. I can't go around the block because you're in so much pain. So you just assume if I don't exercise, how am I ever going to lose the weight? Everyone tells me it's the in and the out, right? So you have to dispel a lot of these myths, a lot of things people believe when you're older, you can't lose weight. As Linda said, I lost all the weight. So did she. I was 53. Yeah, I'm 59 now. No one knows I'm 59. They assume I'm in my 40s. But I can keep up. I go mountain climbing and stuff with my sons in their 30s. So yeah, it's just it's a totally different life. It's lovely. It's beautiful. It's inspiring. It's motivating. And everyone can do it. I've never had one person I've met who did not succeed. I've never had one client who has not succeeded in the four years I've been doing this, losing weight, getting off all their medications, living a happy, healthy life, getting off PCOS, having children after they've, you know, got rid of all of their inflammation in their body. So yeah, arthritis, everything. It just, it's a miracle, but it's all, you have to learn it. And that's what the coaching is. That's what Terra Health coaches do. We come in, take you where you are, discuss all these different realms, because there's so many things we're going to talk about, but that not everything that worked for me, Zainab, or worked for Linda, Linda is going to work for everyone we meet. We kind of, you hear a lot of what we do and you have to try it on your own. You're an experiment of one. So you have to figure out, oh, that sounds, I, that's doable. I can do that. Let me try it. And after a week, most people are just floored. They're just so excited. I sleep. I'm sleeping better. I'm breathing. I'm off of medication. I'm using the restroom. It's more, it's, you know, feels better. I'm not constipated. All the GI issues disappear. Acne. I can go on. The list is just <laughs> endless, really. You know, we all know that. But yeah, it's just beautiful to find people and you just cry with them. I pretty much cry with every client because by the end, you're just, they're so excited and they don't know why they never heard this before. And it's, mm -hmm. that's the sad part about it, I believe, because yeah. doctors don't know about nutrition. And this does have a lot to do with nutrition, with understanding what you're eating and why are we eating all of this food that is just so terrible for our bodies. You know, it's not real. It's not natural food. And when you switch, and I'm not saying anyone has to be 100%. There's days you can have treats. There's, you know, but that's for discussion. That's up for discussion. Try it without and try it with. Which way makes you feel better? And, you know, like I said, and as Linda also, we've done this for, I've sustained my weight loss for, you know, almost five years. Most people, because I'm on a couple registries where they can't even sustain it for a year. You can't even sustain your weight loss, which I know because I yo-yoed my whole life where all the weight would just come back as soon as you lost it. So, yeah. But yeah, I'm really excited to have a group and just to see how much we can do for other people. Yeah. It's just because awesome. when we do for one, they take it into their life. They take it into their family. And that's a beautiful thing to think we can reach all those families and just have no more, you know, obese teenagers and teenagers with diabetes and just have parents really you know, get the, get the idea around the food and the movement and all the pillars that we'll be teaching in the group of lifestyle medicine and hopefully help change, change a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Let's get back um, to actually describing uh, the program. Um, so we are going to be in collaboration with each other. Uh, this is a great program that we're going to do. Uh, the cohorts, there's going to be two different cohorts. They're going to be led by Linda and Zaina, uh, whom you were actually heard speak. Um, and we're really excited. I think, like I said before, lifestyle medicine is really the profession of accountability. And um, I think, you know, it's harder for me, you know, like I'm not going to, you know, lie to you and said, I know what it feels like to carry extra weight. I have it. So there's a lot of power in terms of sharing personal uh, stories, right? And going and 
sharing that, you know, journey with someone and not feeling like you're alone because that's what we don't want to be is alone in this, you know, in our own health and wellness journey. So what's included? Um, so it's going to be broken up. We're going to start, um, you know, in the middle of September, September 11th, and we're going to be collaborating with each other. What's interesting is, is that not only are you going to be led in a three month program, 12 week program by these two amazing coaches, but you're going to be using, uh, the new chef doc app as the base curriculum. We're going to have curated classes and sessions based off of that. In addition to other, uh, resources, that's going to be your curriculum. Just think about it. You're going to be going back to school. Okay. This is not, we're not yo-yoing. We're not, you know, we're not going through another diet or trend or, you know, we're not doing this roller coaster ride, right? You can go to Six Flags if you want, right? This is the real work. We're going back to school and we are teaching from a whole food plant-based, you know, approach. We do understand that people come from different, uh, different places along the spectrum. I've done primary care, right? I meet people where they're at and I recognize, I can acknowledge that people come in differently in their health and wellness journey. Zainab, Linda, you know, John, we all know this, right? So we're going to meet people where they're at, right? We're going to be learning how to apply food as medicine. We're going to uh, learn how to, uh, you know, increase our kitchen skills, you know, in increase our pantry supermarket, you know, skills. We're going to be understanding how to mindfully eat, right? What does that mean, right? To mindfully eat. Um, and we're going to have the whole access to the app right? Um, here's a list of what we're going to talk about. What's great about this is that in a group coaching setting, and guys, you can you know chime on in, is that you're in a peer supported environment. Like how do people respond when they're in a group you know, coaching setting? Like what, what, what kind of feedback do you guys get? It's very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful. And, and it's, um, they form almost like a bond, right? Because everyone is in a different place, but yet they're learning and they're 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 adapting these these things that we're teaching them along the way. And it is it is very it can be very life life changing. Yes, it's very inspiring. It's inspiring because yep. each week people will come and give what they're doing, what they did right, and you just think, well, they're in the same place as I am. They're in the same boat. Look what they did, or. Like I said, you take something that really works for you and you tried it. And then when you come back in the next week, someone else had tried something different. And you think, oh, let me put that into my routine too. Let me try that. That's a good tip. Well, the, so, the thing is, yeah, yeah. It's so inspiring. And they're learning from each other. They're learning from us as well, but they're learning from each other, which is the yeah. beauty in it as well. And I'll address one thing too, uh, a little bit on the other side, but it's also before you start, it's scary. It's scary to think you're walking into a group of strangers and you're going to talk about personal health matters. Mm -hmm. And that's where Linda and that's where Zaina, that's where Dr. Khan, that's where you guys really thrive and is showing a, a safe zone, a comfortable mm -hmm. setting. And then I tell you what, people are scared in the beginning and they're nervous about their personal information. Everything, the coaching piece is done on a HIPAA compliant app with Tara. And then all the curriculum is done through the chef doc app. And it's just, it's this beautiful, protected area. And I tell you what, people are scared when they start, but as soon as they go in there and they sit down and they start talking, it is an unbreakable bond for those 12 weeks that they, they finally kind of learn that they aren't alone. People deal with a lot of the same problems, the same fears, um, and, the, and, and you celebrate all the, all the same successes too. So it's, uh, I will address that. It is scary in the beginning to think about that, is some, especially for those introverts out there, those people that have been made fun of, it might be scary, but take that leap. It is, it is a powerful, powerful space. Excellent. Excellent. Um, like I said, you're going to have access to the chef back app. It's free to download. Okay. You can sample uh, free lessons off of just to kind of get a taste. And it effectively has actually more than 200 hours of content. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have video, audio, you have quizzes there. Um, and it's going to be great. All right. So I'm going to show real quick um, the new chef doc app. Um, and what you're going to see. So in the center is the app. You can download it off of App Store or uh, Google Play. And once you uh, download, which is free to download, um, you get to peruse the programming. 
Um, there is a welcome, uh, welcome video uh, to watch. And that's where you get started. Um, there's directions. It also has the programming, it has Whole Food Plant Based 101, uh, which is an audio course, as well as supermarket and pantry tours. Uh, for positive mindset, the book um, that I've written, Thrive Medicine, um, I've created um, a video companion, which is a 21 day uh, challenge, which is really, really cool. Uh, created uh, basically video companions with the audio book, um, which I'm really super super, super, super excited um, about. And then the Thrive Formula, um, over 50 um, hours um, on my five to thrive uh, pillars, uh, food as medicine, functional fitness, resilience, community relationships. Um, great, great uh, video series here, um, as well as quizzes. Um, and then the first five seasons of the Fry Bites uh, podcast, uh, which is 150 episodes. Um, and then we have our co coaching uh, services. So super, super excited. Um, and we're going to be curating different classes to use as the base um, curriculum. And again, weight loss is not just about weight. It's about community. It's about moving. It's about restful sleep, right? Restorative sleep. It's about quality of relationships, right? It's about how we, you know, intermingle with each other and with ourselves, right? And it's about being in the kitchen. <clears throat> so here are the nitty gritty. We're going to start September 11th, okay? We're only it's only available for 25 seats, okay? 12 weeks, 12 sessions, right? Majority is gonna be led by either Zena or Linda. I'm gonna be teaching at the helm um, expert classes. You're gonna have 24 seven access to the app, right? And another question that was posed earlier is, is there an extra cost with the app? No, it's included. OK, you're going to be in very small, intimate, pure, supportive, like John said, safe settings. OK, and guess what? These coaches have led their own, you know, own journey. They've lost, you know, a, over 200 pounds, uh, you know, between the both of them. And the cost of this is one ninety nine per participant per month. OK, over three months. OK, and we are doing this as a first iteration. And in the future, it may actually, you know, go up. You know, we don't know that yet. So this is going to be the lowest that we're going to offer. And it's only limited to um, 25 seats. So if you guys are, um, you know, wanting to sign on and wanting to register, um, you know, you can uh, email Cecilia um, at terrahealthcoaching.com if you're ready to sign up. But before we do that, I do want to dispel some myths. Guys, uh, what are some myths that we can dispel, right? What are some common asked questions that people come to you and say, well, is it this? Is it that? You know, for people that are not actively asking these questions, can we help to dispel some, you know, myths and misconceptions? Yeah, I, I was, uh, I, I asked a couple of people questions before, before this happened and, and many of the a couple consistent themes were how restrictive is this? How you know I'm, I I want to lose the weight. Um, I I want to tread, tread you know dip my toe in the water. Am I allowed to do that? Is it a restrictive meal plan? How how restrictive is this? Because mentally might not be quite ready for that. Well, I think Linda and I I can start. I think Linda and I might uh, eat different foods. I'm totally plant based, whole food plant based. Um, I think this food's delicious. It's the best food I've ever eaten. You, you know, it's just not any more greasy food. I don't use any oil in my cooking. It is, it is a learning curve. It is a learning curve. But we teach you about why. Why do we, you know, eat these foods compared to these foods? You're choosing. It's all about choice. If you're going to make food, why are you have this choice or this choice? Which one do you want? But yeah, you meet people where they are. No one is... It goes by your personality. Do you want to jump right in and dive right in? Or you just want to one by one take all the dairy out? Because that's kind of the first thing we all in lifestyle medicine try to teach you. 
dairy is really terrible for your body for everything. So let's take the dairy products out. And now we have the plethora of different milks, yogurts, even cheeses made from cashews. I mean, you can find these things in the supermarket if you want them, these pseudo, you know, pseudo foods that we can, you know, have in our diets to transition. But most people that I meet, they just love the idea of just making, you know, foods that are so simple, you know, grains and beans and rice and sauces and fruits and oatmeal. I mean, as I say, all these foods, it just makes my mouth water because it's my food now. <laughs> that's the thing that people, we try to get them to understand that's real food. That's natural food. It's only restrictive if you want it to be. And I've heard a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on around now about when people come in and say you're plant-based or vegan, they say, oh, you, 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 you know, you're so restrictive in your food. I, I agree. A lot of people are saying that, but I don't think it's restrictive because throughout the ages of time, everyone's restrictive. Animals are restrictive. Your horse eats his food. He's not eating dog food, right? The dog eats dog food. Cats eat cat food. We're, we're humans. I mean, we're humans, but we're still animals. So we're eating real food that takes care of our body and makes us healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And and if I can, um, can, I can add to that, once you start looking at the food and you start putting things together is, and we either you're removing things or, you know, monitoring your foods and you start feeling differently. And that's the thing. We're going to bring in a lot of mindfulness as well here. And you start realizing, wow, I feel better. You know, and, and what did I do different? Oh, I didn't have this or I did have this instead. That is where the motivation to change is going to come from. It's how you're feeling. You're feeling not just physically, but mentally, you know, and you're, you're you know, you have a more focus and you're just more energy and things like that. That is a real motivating factor right there. So there are pieces like that that are really going to be the source of change, um, as well as learning about food. If you choose to do that, you know, it's going to be everything. We're, we're meeting you where you are. It's going to be what you decide, you know, to do and how far you want to take it. But again, this has been my journey and you're going to be on your journey. You're going to select as you go, what feels right for you. But in general, Yes, more plant-based eating really will bring back, bring you back to life is this is how I feel anyways, <laughs> but just the way you feel in general will, will definitely be a, a, um, a game changer. And I think it goes back to what I was saying before is that people come into this journey different, right? And, you know, part of that restriction is this whole black and white, you know, that's kind of what defines diet. It's really all or nothing, right? And diet is really always coming back to, oh, I'm just going to take it out. And, you know, knowing that I, you know, may come back to it, let me, you know what I'm saying? So it's, that's where that yo-yo effect is. And it messes with our mind and it messes with our emotions. And guess what? We're just exhausted. I have a lot of patients that are just exhausted, yeah. you know, from that journey. They're just tired. And Mentally. if they're tired, yeah, yeah, if they're tired, what did I say before? You're more inclined to impulsively eat, right? Yeah. And so it's a vicious cycle. It is. Um, so, yeah, yeah and that's, that's where this, this is. That's what we and, teach you. That's what the whole learning part is. Yeah. You. And, from just the research and the studies, we can verse them to you, tell you what's going on and tell you why. Why does your body react to that? We know now, scientifically, we know why. So these are things that are very, it's very powerful when you start to take your body and your life and say, yeah, let me see how that works. She was right. You know, my mm -hmm. headache is gone. My acne is gone. You know, my digestion, I don't have heartburn, haven't had it. Don't take those pills anymore. It's very, very inspiring. You just feel like, yeah, I'm doing something right here. I'm not going to go back. Why would I? I'm just, this is just makes me feel so good. And the other thing I think that we've never really talked about, this is all lifestyle too. And that's what lifestyle medicine is. But you learn new behaviors because right now, if you're a heavy person, if you're overweight or obese, whatever your lifestyle is, it's going to flip 180%. It's going to flip. My lifestyle is just nothing compared to how I used to live before. It's just how you shop, how you talk, how you, how, you know, put your clothes on, activity, happiness. You're not depressed anymore because that's what being being unhappy and unhealthy and medications. And you just feel like defeated all the time, just defeated all the time. Like, why look at that person? How come they did it? And, you know, I can't do it. And, you know, it's just very hard. It's very hard. And there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors, man, woman, hormones, age. But 
we address them all. We help you to understand a little more. We answer your questions as best we can, or we find the answers for you, you know, from professionals and doctors who specialize in something. So we can help you in that re regard very well. Um, I do have a question from the audience. Uh, what help for reducing or eliminating added sugars, flour, and processed food? Uh, it's not a complete sentence, but I think she's asking, you know, how can we eliminate or reduce added sugars, flours, and processed food? And yeah, I'll well, start off by saying, I'll start off by saying that <laughs> because these are very, um, it's not real food, um, mm -hmm. and it has very addictive properties. Yeah. Um, that's the hard part, right? I've had patients where I'm trying to taper them off of soda, right? And I say, hey, let's uh, get some water uh, into you, right? 70% of your body is made up of water, not Coke, right? And they're like, doc, I don't like the taste of water. And I'm just like, there's no taste to water, right? <laughs> so they're just so used to having a very, you know, sugar craving, right? Um, but yes, we have to understand that our taste buds are oriented a certain way. And as we progressively taper down, um, you know, it's going to change. Yeah. Zainab? Yeah, or I was just going to say, since I don't eat any of those foods anymore, I know it's doable. I think maybe the person's asking, how do you live in this? How, how do we live in this life, to, life without it? Because it's everywhere and everything you buy, right? Everything is refined flours and sugars and all of that is it's not real food. And it's about learning like you're, you know, with the cooking, how do I cook for myself? And it's a lot of that's about time management. People who say they don't have time, we can kind of, I think you're going to probably go through that in the kitchen, show how quickly you can make all these different things, have them ready and prepared in your kitchen, in your refrigerator. And sometimes it's just you and your family doing it, but that's all right. Sometimes others will come on into it, but it's all, each person has to just, their environment has to be their friend, their environment where they live. It has to fit what you want, your goals has to fit, your environment has to fit you. But yeah, I don't eat any of those foods. Don't buy them, don't buy packaged foods at all. So it is doable even living here in America. And there is <laughs> there, there is some too where, not, especially nowadays, there's so many substitutes mm. that, mm. And, the, and, and in the coaching, you'll learn that you can sweeten things with dates. You can use uh, the, the different pastas you can get now. Um, you can still get the the, without stripping all the fiber and protein out there, mm -hmm. they're still processed, but they are po many different pasta options as, as you transition to maybe more whole grains um, and you get into the farro and things like that. But there's such a plethora, uh, it's just not, you're not used to it yet, but there's such a plethora of substitutes that it's a very, there, it's gonna be a very gradual operation on terms of kind of getting to you to where you need to be. And there, there's so much out there all it does, there's almost too much. You just have to get into a comfortable setting and learn it. That's all. Yeah, and and absolutely. And if I can add again, it's um, it, we're not going to ask you to, to change your life and change everything, you know, right away. And, and this is where we bring in patience and compassion and 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 all of that into your every day, um, so that you can go the go the journey, go the distance. Um, so it's not going to happen overnight. And so the patience piece is a really big piece. Um, and the forgiveness piece. But I will add again, the, the, the thing that just will keep you on this road is how you feel is, you know, that whole piece and is your why, why are you here? And, and, and those, the whys of the whys, there's layers of whys. Um, and that's a big piece as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with that, guys, um, you know, I want to respect people's time. Um, and, uh, you know, we're at the top of the hour. Guys, do you have any last uh, takeaways, uh, last points that you want to, to mention before we conclude? I want to just reiterate the fear part. There's a lot of people out there that are thinking about it and at least get on the call with Cecilia. Her email is scrolling at the bottom. Give one of us a shout. Anyone here is happy to chat with you with non-commitment, no commitment, just happy to chat more about it. But you know, there's a, there's a fear aspect. And Zainab and, and, and Linda talked about all of the different failures before they even got to the success. And you know, don't be scared of that because you're going to be in a really, a really, really supportive room with some very knowledgeable people that are going to be cheering every step of the way. Awesome. Awesome. 
Well, with that, guys, uh, I bid you a good night. Uh, I want to personally thank John, Zadump, and Linda. Thank you so much for coming on and taking the time out. Um, we're really, really excited um, to lead these cohorts starting in September 11th. Guys, take advantage of um, the offering. Um, it's going to be at $199 per month per participant. It's running for three months. And uh, it's going to go out quick. Uh, it's going to go out quick. Uh, we're really, really excited. And we hope to have multiple iterations of this. And uh, from all of us at uh, the Shelf Doc, as well as Terra Health Coaching, um, please, uh, good night. And we'll see you guys soon, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.